Hi, and welcome to the Vention Assembly Series. My name is Jeremy, and I'm the Education Lead here at Vention. Today, we'll be going over a few things to help you get started with your first Vention Assembly process. First, we're going to take a look at the documents and available resources that can help you stay organized throughout the assembly itself. Secondly, we'll look at the tools required for the assembly. And finally, go over some tips and tricks to make sure that the process goes as smoothly as possible. So before getting started, it's recommended to clear out an open space and lay down a piece of cardboard or soft material to ensure that the parts do not get scratched or damaged during the assembly process. Now that we've prepared our area for assembly, we can get started by opening up our first box. In your shipment, you should find a box that's labeled one of however many you have in your shipment. Or on the other side, you should see a sticker that says open first. With that, we can open it up and see what's inside. Within the box, if you've ordered a sizable shipment, you will find a Vention Welcome Kit. Inside the Welcome Kit, you'll get a Vention Notebook, a Vention Ruler, a five millimeter Allen key and drill driver, And if you've ordered any software that comes with your assembly, you'll receive it on a Vention USB stick. If you've ordered any automation equipment, you should receive some cue cards with additional information. And finally, if you'd like to share some love, we also provide some Vention stickers. Now, regardless as to whether or not you receive a welcome kit, you will also find an itemized bill of materials, detailed assembly instructions, and finally, if you've ordered a machine motion controller with your design, an automated system diagram. Now that you've opened the first box, you can move on to opening the other boxes in your order. When doing so, make sure to organize your parts by category, especially the extrusions, where they should be organized by length and profile. This will help keep you organized throughout the rest of your assembly process. You should note that all of our parts, with the exception of the extrusion profiles, have the part number engraved on them for easy identification. Now that you've organized your parts, let's take a look at the tools required throughout the assembly process. Most fasteners in the Vention library use a five millimeter Allen key. As such, we've included both a traditional T-handle as well as a five millimeter bit if you'd like to use a drill. If your assembly includes any automated systems such as motors as well as powertrain components, they're all mounted using smaller M6 fasteners and as such need a smaller four millimeter Allen key. If you have to tap the ends of any of your extrusions, you will need an 8mm tap. Tapping can be done using either a manual tap handle or a drill similar to the Allen key driver. Another important tool to use is a measuring tape. This is used to measure both the length of the extrusions when organizing them, as well as measuring the position of your parts throughout the assembly process to make sure they are in the correct location. Now finally, if required, we do recommend using a soft-headed plastic mallet to reposition any extrusions or other parts in your assembly. Now that we've taken a look at the physical tools required, we move on to one of the most powerful tools, the computer, where you can look at some of the online resources that will help you throughout the assembly process. We'll start off by opening a Google Chrome browser, which is the preferred browser when accessing the Vention website. However, it should be noted that Vention does support both Firefox as well as Safari. First off, if you haven't already, go through the login process. After you've arrived at the Vention homepage, in the top right, we'll click on the designs found under your user icon. Once the design section has loaded, navigate to the design you would like to open and click on Open in 3D. Once the design has opened, we can start by looking at some of the most useful tools for your assembly. The first one we're going to look at is the Exploded View. In the CAD, if you click on the Exploded View icon in the top toolbar, a slider will appear. The slider will allow you to adjust the amount the assembly is exploded to. This can be very useful for seeing how the parts are installed, as well as all the smaller details that may be covered by smaller sub-assemblies. Next, we'll take a look at the parts annotation feature. In the parts annotation dropdown found in the top toolbar, you can select from one of three different options. The two that are useful during the assembly process are the ability to show the parts dimensions, as well as the ability to show the part numbers. If you recall from earlier, all of our parts have the part number engraved on them with the exception of the extrusion profiles. This makes it very helpful for identifying where each part goes and helps you stay organized. Next, we'll be looking at the measurement tool within the CAD. 
Also found under the annotation section in the top toolbar, you'll see that there are three different measurement options that you can select from. The first being the face-to-face -face measurement tool. The face-to-face -face measurement tool operates by clicking on one two-dimensional face and then selecting a second parallel face to show the distance between the two. The second one we can use is the edge measurement tool. Once selected, we can click on the edge of a surface to get the distance between its two extreme ends. Finally, we have the point-to-point -point measurement tool. This tool can be used when measuring dimensions that cannot be accessed when using the other two methods, such as diagonal or non-parallel surfaces. This works by clicking on a first point and dragging it to a secondary point. To hide all on-screen dimensions, simply navigate to the measurement dropdown and select Hide Dimensions. The next tool that we'll be looking at is the Design Tree View, found under the View section of the toolbar. The most important item here is the Parts Category, which behaves like an interactive bill of materials. With the Parts Category expanded, you can click on any of the part numbers and they will be highlighted in the design itself. This also works inversely in that you can click on a part in the design and it will be highlighted in the Parts Category. There is also information about which fastener is used with which part, which is very useful when non-standard fasteners are used. A great side note is that you can also use these part numbers to search the respective 2D drawings or specification sheets found in the parts library on our website. When in the design itself, some useful shortcuts to use are Control H to hide selected parts, which can give you visibility on hidden portions of your assembly, or by right-clicking and selecting Make Transparent to the same end. To make everything visible again, press Control Shift H. Finally, it's very important to plan out your assembly in subsections, usually going from the ground up. In the case of the design on screen, we have planned for the assembly of the base section, followed by the installation of the actuator, and finally, the installation of the robot itself. Now that we're done exploring the powerful InCAD tools, we can now take a look at some of the more hardware-oriented tips. Let's take a look at some basic hardware tips. We'll be starting off with the basics of TNUT installation. We do highly recommend installing the T-nuts at the end of extrusions. The reason being is it's the easiest and fastest way to do it. When installing the T-nuts, we do recommend placing them prior to assembly. However, if you do miss a T-nut, you can actually place one in afterwards. Simply take the T-nut, drop it in horizontally, and flatten it with your finger. Now that you've installed the T-nuts in your extrusion profile, you can then use the vention ruler to properly space them, as well as slide them up and down the vention extrusion. One of the great things about using the ruler is that it's designed using the Vention's 45 millimeter increment. From here, we'll move on to showcase how easy it is to tap the end of your extrusion. To tap the ends of your extrusions, we'll be using the hardware supplied in Vention's tapping kit. The first thing that we're going to do is take the tap guide and insert it into the end of your aluminum profile. It should be noted that the tap guide does fit our 45 by 45, 45 by 90, and 90 by 90 millimeter extrusion. From here, whether you're using either the manual tap handle or a drill, you should apply a small amount of tapping fluid and then insert it into the tap guide. From here, you can start by rotating clockwise to start forming the threads to your desired depth. One thing to note is if you're using the manual tap handle is to rotate counterclockwise to evacuate the chips from the cutting head. Once complete, rotate counterclockwise to remove the tap completely from the extrusion profile. From here, you can then use the brush to clean out any of the residual chips left in the extrusion profile. Moving on to the fasteners, when you receive your order, you'll have the fasteners in individual bags with labels indicating their appropriate hardware number. As we saw on the CAD, not all parts use the same fastener. Most use the standard M8 by 18. However, some use longer, shorter, and others even a different size altogether. Because of this, it's very important to keep track of the fasteners and make sure you match them with your appropriate parts. Also, when you're doing the assembly, it's recommended that you tighten the fasteners to finger tight. Then, when the time comes at the end of assembly process, proceed to tighten them to the recommended 13 Newton meters of torque. As a wonderful last recommendation, we strongly suggest that you assemble with a colleague. This can be very useful in reducing the errors, making the overall assembly process easier, while avoiding any possible injuries when working with larger assemblies. That's everything you'll need to know for getting started with your Vention assembly. Thank you so much for watching, and please check out the other videos in the assembly series.